Welcome to the Comic Fiends Comic Friends. This week, I've got my friend, Dylan. Welcome. Hi. Uh, hello. In this podcast, uh, I bring people on to talk about their experience with comics and, you know, what it means to them, what they like, and then maybe get some recommendations out of it. So I hope uh, hope you're excited. I am. I think I might have read a comic before. I hope so. I really <laughs> hope so. This will be really awkward if I have never done that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Yeah, it'll be good. It's, it's, I'm looking forward to it. I have a couple ideas. Total waste of time. What a waste of time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's going to be good. No, please. Please don't turn off the video. I swear. We're, we know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's going to be great. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so first of all, we met through Kairos, which I talked about last week, last week, last episode, I guess, with Carrie. Um, I don't know if you wanted to say some stuff about it, too. Like, Well, like last week, yeah. Uh we went through Kairos, you again, as was mentioned last week, and for those of you who aren't watching this weekly, how dare you, um, this is a great show. Uh, Thank you. Carrie pointed out that, uh, yes, you play Grant, you play our main character, um, Carrie is the other half of the writer-director team, I am the other guy who's like, I like comics, I'm gonna write my, try and do our own thing and make it really good, and so far and like it's really it's all our voice cast and you being one of the primaries is uh the reason that we haven't all given up and you know soul crushing it's great like it's a lot of fun it's something fun to do and gives us a little taste of the industry that we're all trying to bust into proper and it lets me uh flex my edit skills which are sorely you know underutilized at this point in time mm -hmm. yeah well you know when we all make it big we'll all take each other to the top right that's how it works exactly well like it like it might be like small like little you know we'll, we'll aim for a streamy like mm. streamy 2020 will be great yeah if the internet still exists and then like an oscar six months later well how that we can do that i can do that wow all right <laughs> we Going might as it. well dream yeah it's true <laughs> doesn't hurt yeah not at all all right so getting to comics what kind of comics do you read um i read a little bit a lot uh a little bit of everything. I'm not one to go Marvel only, DC only, or even just like the third party graphic novels. I kind of like a nice spread of everything. Hmm. And it's more of like if I if I liked the character over like over time or something like that, or like somebody gives me a premise that like sounds really really cool, I'll kind of go for that. Or if, again, it could just be as simple as like I like this last Thor movie. I'm gonna read up on that arc and see how different it is. Stuff like that. Hmm. That's a good approach. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a really it's a really wonky approach because like i never really read comics as a kid like i, I read archie comics that was that was my yeah comic books when archie I was really shout out. all the archie stuff and then the stuff that was like slapped in there's so, like there was like little sonic the hedgehog experts and still archie other... still, yeah, still archie. archie but like they, <laughs> they, they slipped in little other comics between their in their big digests like thick ones hmm. and i used to read a bunch of those and yeah, I wasn't really like when I was younger, like younger, younger, I didn't really do the comic books because like I had a few that would come in like grab bags at cons or something like that. And I'm like, oh, sweet Spider-Man. And it's five pages long. And why would somebody want to read this? This is infuriating. But as I kind of got older and like because the, the one big thing for this whole thing was my dad. My dad's a huge Batman fan. Mm. Like Adam West is his was his hero. Like loves oh. the guy. Mm. Rip Adam. Thanks for everything. Uh, so I, I've been in, like, was kind of influenced by all this stuff for years and years and years, mostly through like the movies and like the nineties Batman TV show, like the, the animated one, mm -hmm. Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. Um, and I was like, I love that stuff. And that's kind of where I started. And then when I was in high school, I won a, a mystery long box of comics that Whoa. like at like a, a, the local con. And it was, it was, a a silent auction type dealio where you would walk around, you know, write your num name and your price on the thing. And me and my buddies were like, okay, this long box of comics is sealed. Nobody knows what's in it, but nobody's bidding on it. So let's like throw five bucks at it. And this random dude came running over and he's like, oh my God, I know what's in this box. And he kept like outbidding us. Like he we would basically, we would stand side by side and write a number. He would write a number and it would go on like that for like half an hour. Oof. And eventually... One of my buddies just like I have an idea. Ro goes over there and like writes like a hundred, like three hundred bucks or something on it, and the guy's like, "What the hell?" And he walks away. He, like he gives up. And my buddy just erases his number and then puts like a dollar more than the last guy bid. Oh boy! 
Uh-huh. So we like totally sniped him on it, which was hella rude. And I apologize if that guy is out there and still mad at us, if you know, <laughs> 10 years later or whatever. Yeah. Sorry, dude. Um, but in his defense, I understand why he wanted it. It turned out when we opened up the long box, it was every Marvel comic that had anything to do with the Infinity War saga. Whoa. All the Infinity Stones, all of like the Infinity War stuff, anything with Thanos, uh, all the stuff that leads. Basically, it was... From an outsider's perspective, like when we got this, I think, I think Captain America had just come out, like the movie. So this was pre Avengers in the movie theater when we got this box, uh-huh. and we were like, like that's kind of weird. Like, oh, the Infinity War thing, that kind of sounds cool. And then you know, watch Cap, and we're like, Tesseract, where have we heard that before? And then we start going through this and realizing that this might be the entire roadmap for what Marvel was trying to do with the movies. And we kind of just freaked out entirely. So I've like over the years since we've had that, I keep going back to the things and seeing, trying to kind of predict what they're going to do. And after they like drop the big, here's what phase three looks like. And we know all the movies. I'm like, okay, they've completely derailed the story, but here's all this other stuff. That's really, really cool. And kind of from there, I went off and like got like the more, the solid issues where it was like the uh, collections of all the little micro issues into one big book. I would get those so that I would, you know, have a full story arc in one book instead of having like a, a hundred little tiny issues. Yeah, the it's it's a I think going for trades after fl- having floppies for years is a a sign of maturity. I think. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> yeah, no, I totally it's agree. A, it's it's super nice to have because it looks a lot nicer on the shelf. It kind of yeah. like just looks a little more professional. It's a lot more expensive though. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, actually, it no. I mean, if you talk about like you know price per issue. It's like, you know, three or four dollars mm. per issue versus, you know, whatever, twelve to fifteen for the trade. Right? Yeah, fair enough. So Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. It's it's more of the, the 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 second you're like, oh man, I could get like a bunch of comics for however like five bucks or something. Whatever whatever trades is at the floppies is for at this point. I haven't bought one in a long time. Yeah. And me then either. you get the big trades and they're like forty bucks and you're like, Well, it is a year of content in one book. Like it kinda it kinda weighs out. Yeah, yeah. And it's not so bad. Easier to share too. Way easier to share because you you'll never get a floppy back, and if you do, it's it's gonna be like in half. It's gonna be awful. Uh-huh. You're gonna yeah. read. <laughs> That's when you hand them like six floppies, boarded and bagged, that they have yep. to read with tongs and wear clean gloves while they. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, that was the other thing. All those books in that long box were boarded and bagged, like uh-huh. they were brand new mint. They were gorgeous, and I, oh man, I still. Feel bad for opening that box sometimes, but it's yeah. It was like so. So that's my quote unquote comic collection. Everything else is in trades and hardbacks or like digital on my phone at this point. Hmm. Um, yeah. So that's so that's uh, how, okay. So you, <laughs> this is your this is your uh, sort of cape stuff, right? But you were saying that you started with Archie. Like, where did that come from? Like, was that like a, a, that a family was friend? Like, kind of my family? my aunt when i was little she's like oh I, it's your birthday like i used to read these when i was a kid she would get like the archie digest you find like in like superstores like, mm-hmm. or, like superstore supermarkets at the gro- at the uh, checkout yeah pick some up throw them so I, I had like 40 or 50 of like the double j- digest like the really thick ones and i just like i read those all the time i'm like i like archie he's an adult even though he's in high school and he's having a lot of wacky yeah. adventures and this is fun it was super nice so like that was kind of my as comics go and eventually like you start reading them like oh this is fun and then you go back a few years later and you reread them like oh that's what that storyline is actually about (laughs) oh this actually makes it because like half the time like i was so young i'm like they're like they're doing all like the the yellow box like notes like oh check archie number 76 to explain what they're talking about in this box or like they're talking about some other event that happened in a different storyline i'm like and that was kind of when i started to figure out that these may be like separate isolated stories but they're part of a bigger universe Hmm. and like you like i read like i've read books like you like at the same age like kind of like harry potter right there are all these books and they're like it's just one big story but to me when i was a kid thinking like there's this one story that has this character but there's another story that has this character in it but the effects of one storyline affects another storyline which affects a further storyline like that was mind-blowing Mm. And I loved it. I'm like, oh, like, uh, like a shared universe, like, was a big thing for me when I was a kid. 
yeah, kind of no. is now, like especially with how like Marvel's doing their big thing and like the DC animated movies do the same idea. Like, like that is that's why I love the medium is like we can tell our own story, but we can make it do other things like way down the line or call back it without it being like this earth shattering thing that, oh, I didn't read this comic. I don't know what happens. But if I read this comic, I give it all this extra new detail and, it's, you know, it's super cool. Like it's world building. It, it gives you so much more fluff, so much more, you know, stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I don't think I, I, I mean, I, I, I think one of my first sets of the uh, comics collect collections actually was archie stuff uh i think jughead double digest was one of my first um it's yeah, yeah. unfortunately been destroyed just through from being a child and the passage of time but um i don't think i had ones that were con- you know uh connected like that like see this or that to to know what's going on here so it's interesting that you did like i i'd like to see those i don't, I don't know if you have them, but yeah yeah, I'd like I to see what, like, what? My, they got to be at my parents' house somewhere at this point. Mm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was it was just it was because it was like it was always like the digest collection. So like you never had the other attachments of the story. And like I remember when I first I, I got a digest one year and it had the other half of a story from a different book. And I'm like, <gasps> this is the greatest day of my life. The other mm-hmm. half of the story is stupid, but yay! <laughs> I finally like, find out what happens after. Uh, yeah, cousin Ambrose did something that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly it's like Deep cuts oh man you wacky scoundrel like i don't trust you after last time what did you do last time he put glue in my milk I'm like okay it's something yeah. like like sort of like that so that's kind of that's where it all started and then it, it eventually became like going through and watching like the batman animated series it's like okay now i know how basically how everybody works but i kind of want to see like how it's different so like read through a couple of books and realize that don't let Frank Miller touch Batman because it gets really dark and scary. And that's not a good idea for a kid to read that stuff mm. ever. 10 mm. <laughs> year old me uh. does not need the goddamn Batman banging Catwoman on a pier. That just, ah. I, I don't need that. That was a mistake. Right. <laughs> Oops. That was a bad Google. Oops. That was a bad, bad Google. But All right. It, yeah. It happens, <laughs> right? Yeah. Comics yeah. are weird as you know, many, many internet people have said over the years, comics are weird. And we kind of live yeah. with it because we also kind of love it, right? It's, you know. Kind of. Just a little bit. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, yeah, so it's, you got your Marvel, you got your DC, and then you've got, like, the Star Wars comics have always been, like, you know, either kind of campy or kind of weird. But, like, have you read any of the Star Wars comics yet? I've had it recommended to me a bunch of times, and I have, I think, Vader Down, at least. Uh, some the new, of the Like, the most stuff. recent run of Vader? Yeah, pretty recent, pretty recent yeah, Vader stuff. Yeah, that's really good. That's what people tell me, but I will, you know, I will check them out sooner, sooner or later. <laughs> sooner or later. Again, Just like, if, if you're not much. a big, like, Star Wars EU person, like, it's not mm-hmm. as exciting, but I'm, mm-hmm. a, I'm a huge Star Wars guy, so, like, watching Vader be like... Going from whiny Anakin Vader to, holy God, why Rogue One Vader in like, oh in yeah, like in that in that gorgeous, gorgeous art style that I can't think of the artist that they do, mm. where he's just ripping through people and like being a crazy badass, like that's really cool, and like again tying all the little loose ends everywhere and maybe bringing back a bunch of like old EU stuff that no one knows about anymore, or only the hardcore you know big nerds know about makes us cry, like that's good stuff. Seems like it. Um, people yeah. seem to be pretty passionate about it. So, cause I think I've had it recommended multiple times at this point. So, uh, I'm sure it's worth giving it a, giving it a, a proper swing. So I'll, well, I, I'll I save you the, it. uh, the additional recommendation then and just mm. go with the, uh, I'll find something different to recommend you today. Well, sure. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> um, so, sure okay. So let's say you got started and kind of what you, so you said that you like sort, sort of how, they can be connected, but no, don't necessarily have to be connected. Is that is that like a big factor in what you like about comics? Like what you, what's really appealing about them to you? Yeah, because like again, like with that, you could also get like the uh, uh, multiple like or no multiverse stuff or the like Earth three, Earth four, Earth X stuff in DC, where it's it can be all those things. They can affect the greater story, but you can also just see. Here's a world where Batman is 
an Atlantean for some reason. Like you, like you, it gives you a chance to play with your medium, like keep the same characters and more or less the same personality, but throw it into different places, and still have those affect other stuff. Or I'm trying to think of a good one, like like the uh, uh, the Secret Wars arc in Marvel, where like all this earth shattering stuff's going on and crazy like conspiracies and every like all these people you trusted turn out to be Skrull and like world's going to end. But then if you flip over to Spider-Man, he's just doing his Spider-Man thing and has no idea what's going on at all, Mm -hmm. even though it's all happening in the background and what happens in that Spider-Man comic will affect what happens in secret world or secret war. But Spidey doesn't know what's going on because he's just, you know, he's like, I'm going to go to Manhattan and I'm going to get a bagel. Like it's like, he's doing his own thing. He's fighting Doc Ock. He's hanging out. He's, having his own little arc, his own story, or whatever hap- happened to be happening at that point in time. And it's at all, not at all like, he's like, oh, the world's going to end. He's oblivious to that fact. So you mm. get kind of stuff like that. And I, I think that's really cool, because then you get you get your your moments of, there's a big explosion. Well, let's look at it from 10 blocks away where somebody isn't involved, and he's like, oh, that's weird. I'm going to go back to school. Like, it, it's cool. I like. I really like that, even though I'm probably not explaining it at all very well. Um, so, well, let me try and see if I can, if I've received it right. Um, what you like about it is that they can do these sort of bigger events that don't necessarily affect the individual story so that the characters can go off on their own and sort of live out their own arcs. And then maybe it's tied back or potentially could tie back to the, to the greater picture. Does that sound right? Yeah. Ex- yeah. Like that. Like, uh, I got you, man. Yeah. If I have to use a movie reference, like you can have an Avengers sure. movie where everybody's together. And then you can still have a standalone movie where they're doing their own thing. Like, the separation. It's still good. I like mm. that. Mm-hmm. It's fun. What else do you think that you can get from the medium that you can't really get from other things? Like, what is it about comics specifically versus television and film? Because I know, I know it's like a whole other thing, you know? Yeah. Well, part of the medium being, like, fully fully graphic it's it's fully drawn out right Mm. so with like film and tv you have to maintain even with like jumps and leaps and cgi and animation in general you kind of have to keep it more like almost realistic even if it is like monsters and aliens running around fighting and blowing up and stuff but you can't have like crazy kooky designs and like things that are just completely absurd like um have you have you ever read saga I have read some of Saga. I need to, like, commit to it. Get give it so, like Okay, a... so you kind of get the idea. If, if I were to say, like, look at any of the character designs in that, or, like, yeah. the, the more or less story, try and picture that in, like, live, live action or something like that. Or, like, it's just so absurdist and so weird mm. that you can get away with doing these more, like, fantastical tales. And because you've got that extra punch of visual, it's... Like it's it like sets your imagination more like set into this like if it, it gives you more building blocks more foundation more you know sucks you in than it just reading like a, a regular book and mm. it also gives you like if you read a regular book it's like there's a man with a TV for a head you're like that's weird you see it in the comic you're like oh that makes total sense you see it on TV and it's like that's uncanny valley and I'm afraid of it like mm. it it blends this whole thing without making you. You know, try, it gives you the the ingredients for your imagination to, like, accept this is crazy and awesome. But it doesn't go like, here's how it would look next standing next to you and freak you out. And you have your brain go, I would rather not, please. Mm, mm-hmm. Kind of like that. So yeah. sort of like because of the visual, the visual properties of the medium, you're, it, that aspect of it does the heavy lifting in terms of what you need to imagine. And so then it's sort of lets you play it out i guess yeah yeah and so you've got your your that sat half and you've got the the smaller bite-sized chunks of content as well right because again like an old foldy is only like 10 or so pages this quick little chunk of an arc and like so you can pick up and go read a chunk put it down go off and do a thing or if you want to binge you can just go hard like it's a little more like you don't have to sit there and commit to multiple minutes of your life to get through a chunk. You can pick up a chunk. If it doesn't interest you, you can move on with your life. If it does, then you've got all this 
avenue of time to give into it. Uh, okay. So that one's more like your ability to scan sort of translates uh, yeah. how long it'll take you for you to enjoy it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's the right way to describe it. I Words are not good with my mouth hole and brain pen. <laughs> Excellent. That was, that's a perfect thing to hear. That's right a quote now. you can use on everything. I'm going to put it on a shirt. Mm. It's, yeah, it's it's hard to explain, but like the the comics graphic novels as a medium it's just it it fills a, a different kind of niche than a regular scripted show or a regular like literary novel everything like they're all i wouldn't say like this is the ultimate penultimate way to consume media but like everyone's got their fault like their pros and cons but this is just a really well wet well-rounded way of showing off what you can do stories you can tell like environments everything like that just a good like bite size of the imagination chunk right there before you. Mm. Yeah, and I, I think uh, I think it's a good approach to it, or a good. Hmm. I guess uh, you could think of it almost a little bit like storyboarding. Like this is totally diminishing the medium, but if you want to think about adaptations, the comics generally should be able to serve as a pretty good storyboard for how things can or should be presented right like yeah a good first draft at um uh, i guess as abs- presenting these abstract ideas right exactly and sometimes even the the source material for something like that does actually end up becoming a chunk of the storyboard i think the best example of that would be scott pilgrim they ended hmm. up using they ended up re shooting scenes exactly like they were in the book just because they were so stylized by they could easily replicate it with camera work Mm -hmm. so sometimes that actually does pan out makes sense yeah is there anything else about the medium that really speaks to you i don't know (laughs) i don't know if i'm pushing this here um honestly like i just i find comics fun i like fun fun media things that like don't take itself too seriously but can still give you a like a gripping emotional story Mm mm-hmm like, you've got stuff that's wacky and silly. You've got things that's heartbreaking and dark. You've got the experimental stuff that's a little weird. You've got you've got so many so much potential in it that, like, it's just a lot easier to, you know, produce, kind of, and uh, consume than, like, a lot of the other versions. So it's, it's, it's nice. It's small. It's tasty. It's good. Mm. Very delicious. Yes. Uh. Food <laughs> metaphor, <laughs> yeah. if you will. Uh, um yeah. is that so i guess so uh, what are you what are you keeping up with lately if there's anything lately i've been it's the marvel stuff so it's the uh, the new vader comics again because they've been doing bridging that whole gap and showing you know cleaning up of the galaxy post clone war and all that stuff which is really cool uh dr mm. afra which is another star wars comic which doctor what dr afra Afro. Oh, she said Dr. Afro. I was like, huh. That would be great. That's a Star a Wars thing? Yeah. Great. No, uh, Dr. Afro. Uh, it's basically Indiana Jones in the Star Wars universe. Oh. If that Indiana cool. Jones worked for the Nazis. Oh. She, she's hmm. uh, an imperial smuggler that basically goes and finds like old Sith relics for the Empire. And it's, it's, it's hilarious. It's really well written. And it, again, like it delves into a bunch of like old like old republic lore and brings back a bunch of stuff from like the old like the knights of the old republic games and stuff like that it's it's their way of kind of dragging stuff into canon very very slowly as Hmm. well as doing a bunch of other connecting stuff and it's a lot of fun because it basically is indiana jones and with star wars that sounds really interesting the whole first arc is almost as close to raiders of the lost ark as you can get like she goes and finds an old sith relic that when you open it is full of souls of Sith demons and that melt faces. <laughs> yeah, it sounds pretty. It's, maybe a little too close. <laughs> it's a little too close. Just, uh, okay. They were like, "Hmm, is that too far?" Nah, it's fine. The yeah. rest of it hasn't been nearly as on the nose, but like that sure. one, there was some inspiration, and you can't tell me it wasn't there. It sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gee. It's a lot of fun, though. Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely interested. That sounds yeah. really weird and, and cool. Again, if you if you've ever played like. Uh, the old uh, KOTOR games, 
she's her personal like she's got a a 3PO droid I can't remember the mark of it but it's basically HK47 it's hilarious oh okay he's just going off about meat bags all the time and at one point just leaves the group he's like you know what this is stupid I'm leaving I want nothing to do with this it was great fantastic yeah so uh so those two Star Wars comics because of course I'm a huge Star Wars nerd um the most I think it's I'm, I don't know if it's still going this year I haven't had a chance to check but uh, at least the 2017 arc of the just the general Batman comics have been huh. really really interesting. Like it's it's Batman. It's nothing earth shattering or crazy, but there have been it's I can't remember what Earth quote unquote it is at this point, but it's the it's the one where Bruce and Selina have actually like gotten married and they're Whoa. actually okay like. She goes out with him at night as Catwoman, so it's Batman and Catwoman going out and doing things. And it's been, like, a really interesting kind of, like, look into their lives and how it all affects. But if I... But there's a, a mini arc inside the over arc that is, like, it's probably my favorite... Like, it's only two books, or two uh, issues. It's probably my favorite one that they've done in a long time, and it's just Batman Super Friends. And mm-hmm. it literally ends up being... Batman or Bruce and, and Selena meet up with uh, Lois and Clark. Oh, in the middle in the middle of their job, and they end up saying, "Screw it, let's go get drinks." Like, and it's so so well done, especially after the the way the DC movies have been going. Like mm-hmm. to show how like they're supposed to be best friends, right? They're not just like yeah yeah begrudging work buddies. They're like they're really really good friends. Yeah, and it shows this in such a like genuine way, and it's also it's got some really hilarious moments throughout the whole thing, and like I don't I can't remember if it's exactly if it starts with this or there's some preamble before, but it begins with basically like Batman and Catwoman going off to like stop a bad guy, and uh, Superman ends up going off to do the same thing, but Lois is with him because she kind of got caught up with their date night and got interrupted by whatever crime was going on. And as they're going, they're like, they meet up with each other, like, for a second. And they're like, I'll do this. You go on your date. Like, no, I'll do this. You go on your date night. And they part ways and meet up with their uh, prospective significant others on the way. And the whole back and forth is, like, it's on the opposite side of the city, but they're having the exact same conversation except in reverse. Where uh, Bruce is talking to Selena. He's like, I can't, I have to do this because, like, I do this because I want Clark to be the better man. Like, Clark doesn't have to do this. He's literally a god. He can save people. Like, he's way better than I'll ever be. Like, uh, I mean, emo Batman. And then, mm-hmm. conversely, Clark's like, Bruce is a real human. Like, like he doesn't have to sacrifice his life for this. Like, he should be happy with Selena and doing, like, all these things. And both their partners are like, dude what are you talking about? Like, can you not see the similarities between you two? And they're having this conversation yeah. uh-huh. panel to panel. And it's, it's, it's really well written and it culminates. And basically they both get in an elevator. One goes down, one goes up and they meet up on the same floor and they just step out and they're just like, Bruce Clark, why'd you take the elevator? I didn't want to break a window. I figured you'd be mad. Why didn't you fly? It's like, I probably would have broken the roof. And they're like, they just stand there awkwardly for two panels, and then yeah. Selena just goes over to Lois like, "Hi, you must be Lois." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have, like, I have, I yeah. That I wasn't sure about it, but once you started talking about the elevator, I have seen those panels. Yeah, and it just oh, it looks it, beautiful. It's so it's so good. Like yeah, it it the whole the rest of the, the two issues basically is it's just the double date between like two of the most powerful beings in the DCU just yeah. hanging out having a date night. And it's, it's yeah, so it's I think it's it's there's it's just it's just Batman. Batman issue thirty six, thirty seven, Super Friends. And yeah, hmm. like even you don't really need the rest of it, like just those two, just for that one micro story arc, because it's really, really good. It's a lot of hmm. fun. Is this the one uh where they go to like a Halloween party and they all like sort of swap? Like they're all Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah, they... I have seen like some screenshots of that and that looked great. Yeah. So now Okay, I gotta check this stuff out too. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, that <laughs> great, whole great, great, party great. scene, by the way, is hilarious because great. the whole reason they have to swap gear mm. is because they go to the party in like civvies as Bruce and Clark and their wives. So when they mm-hmm. get there and they're like, "Oh, sorry, it's a costume party; only costume people allowed." They walk out and they're like, "Oh, well, we can just put our costumes on." And then 
versus like, no, if we do that, that'll be way too obvious because we're obviously the real versions. Yeah. So yeah. they all just switch gear and just to see what happens. That's and then so they good. end up getting in a fight and Clark can't figure out how to use any Batman gadgets and Batman's like, I don't have any weapons, oh god. Yeah. It's really okay. funny. Yeah, I need to see this for sure. Yeah, I super recommend it. Mm. Uh what else am I keeping up with? I again more Batman stuff. If you can't tell, I I like Batman. Batman's fun, but surprisingly, no isn't idea. my favorite DC hero, which is a really hmm. stupid thing. Because I've never <laughs> my favorite DC hero is Captain Marvel, Shazam. Oh yes, yeah. He's my favorite by yes. far. I have never read any of his comics. Really, really. Oh I've, man, I gotta recommend you some stuff. I gotta dig it I up. I would but... love to because I've only ever seen him in like the animated stuff. Yeah, and like some other times he shows up in other people's comics, and the idea of a ten year old in in, a, in like Superman's body saving the world is like the best thing to me because especially when he's yeah. like, I just want to have fun and help people, and then he gets like, you know, he saves the day. He's like, I'm amazing, or he gets destroyed, and he's like, I'm ten. What the heck? Mm-hmm. Like it's it's just a, such a really cool dynamic, and I really like it. And I'm I'm ashamed to admit I've never read any of the books. That's hey, that's fine. That just means that you uh, we know where, I know where to direct you to. I think somewhere I would love. Some yeah, of I, dude, I'm all about the big red cheese, man. Like, yeah, the there's just you... and then visually, he's perfect to me. Like, you you got this big dude, kind of like grease slick back hair. I'm talking about like classic, like the, yeah. the original original design for him. Uh, where he's got like his he's got the squinty eyes and that that like half cape that's going over his shoulder on the on the red tights. Oh, it's so good. It's pr- yeah. just uh I love it so much. I can't wait. I I hope, you know. I don't know what's going to happen with a Shazam movie. Have you but... have you seen the one screenshot they leaked online? No. They it's a screenshot of the suit from the uh-huh. back. Uh-huh. The suit looks amazing. Does it? Like, oh, boy. It's not it's not half cape, it's full cape, but it's full mm. cape and hood. But it mm. like it's not kind of like you know how when like the Captain Marvel, like the Marvel Captain Marvel pictures came out and her suit was like green and black or like the Wasp one they were all really dark colors. It's yeah like it's bright red and gold. It looks oh. like color scheme wise it looks perfect. Mm. Like mm-hmm. I I was always kind of like little iffy on the guy they cast to play like the full body version of him. Mm-hmm. But the dude's like bulked up and it looks I'm. I'm okay with it. I'm happy. Like I I wasn't like I don't like this. I was I'm quite thrilled. So I will. I'll keep my reserves. I know DC movies have hurt me in the past, and this one will be the one that kills it for me if it goes wrong. But yeah, I have faith. Yeah, please yeah. be good. Please be good. Please be good. Please be good. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm right there with you, man. I, I really hope so. Um, yeah, just, just. I mean, the transforming hero thing, the kid in an adult's body thing, the, 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 the glimmering half cape. Yeah, it's just there's too much too much good stuff in it for it's, me it's so good it's just it's fun like i again like i think favorite version of him is like the young justice version of him when nobody oh, yeah. knows he's a kid and he's mm-hmm. just like i'm just here to help have fun and help and everyone's like why is this guy so weird and yeah like oh he's a kid oh god what have we done yeah yeah <laughs> it's a great moment that's great. I I I, uh, I think recently was watching that clip over and over where Batman's like, "It's our fault because we didn't know, or you guys didn't know. I actually knew, because like, of course Batman I knew. I knew. knew the whole time. Yeah, everyone just gives him the side eyes, like Bruce. Yeah. What the hell? And he's like, yeah. "What? Of course I knew." <laughs> yeah, that's it's great. I love it. Love I think my it. favorite my favorite uh, scene for the Young Justice Shazam is uh, when. He's babysitting the kids, and they're all like, we're going to go and sneak off and have an adventure. We'll meet you at the beach in ten minutes. He's like, okay. And he runs outside, and the end of the episode is he comes in all soaked. He's like, you guys coming out? thought we were going to play. Oh. And I'm like, oh, man, no. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. You poor, yeah. poor boy. I would be I would be his best friend. 100%. Yeah. Same. I don't care if he's a ten-year-old. That sounds rad. <laughs> Superhero ten-year-old. As long as he's, yeah. All right, yeah. 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 I think that would be funny. Be a, yeah. that would be a good a good day mm. yeah, yeah i think that i hope yeah i hope they can capture that aspect of it yeah um all right yeah well and mm, i think that might be it i mean i hmm. could i could tell you a ton of things about the uh the film side of the comic nightmare without maybe, breaking an NDA. Or maybe that'll be like <laughs> maybe episode. 
Uh, yeah, I think I think maybe we should do one. Let's focus on that for sure. Love to do a uh, superhero movie slash TV uh, run if you want to do a separate one. I got a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm definitely interested. Yeah. Like this is a scoop, right? I'm getting first. Oh, nah, dude, I could 100 percent like ruin my life right now and just Uh-oh. tell you everything. Okay, no, oh, let's not do also, that. Yeah, it no, would also no, no. be no fun for you. Mm-hmm. Um, I can tell you that the thing that I am currently just finished, actually just wrapped yesterday, uh, uh-huh. is going to be good. You will enjoy it. You are not expecting it to be what it is going to be. Oh boy. Okay. Oh boy. Sounds good. If you enjoyed the first one, you'll enjoy the second one. Um, you're just not prepared. That's all I'm going to say. All right. <laughs> Let's keep it vague. Let's keep it vague. I don't want to get you in trouble here. Don't worry. No, not that it's I all think good. that like real, real high high level execs are listening to this, but just in case, you gotta be safe, right? They bugged my house. <laughs> mm, yeah. Uh, Bet you anything, they put a bug in my kit. It's fine. Oof. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, okay. Well then, um, how about uh, we go with like a top three recommendations thing? And we'll call it like three things. It doesn't have to be you know something you're reading currently. Just stuff that you think is good or you think is important to you that you think people should read. Okay. Keep I'm it to three. That's, the, it to that's three. the challenge. Okay. <laughs> three, three is easier. A, a lot easier than five. Sounds but good. I, I had five checked out in case you went we do five. Mm, it's okay. Mm. Um, I'm going to change it slightly since you've already been recommended a bunch of stuff. Uh, I will say the Dr. Afro comics, especially yeah. if you do like Star Wars and Indiana yeah. Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Because it's it's a little it's something a little different, even if you don't really like if you not a huge Star Wars fan and you don't like EU stuff that much, just uh ignore when like Vader shows up and you're more or less okay. No, I that, that's fine. I, I like Star Wars well enough, I'm just not like super duper crazy <laughs> about it. I, I I've gone and seen you know, I've seen them all. You know, that's enough, yeah, right? That's all that matters. Yeah. Uh I'll go with that. Um I'll go with uh, that that micro arc of Batman because I think it's just it's a it does the characters a good service. It it shows off what you can do with those two characters, mm-hmm. like as to make them humans. Because as it's been said before, like Marvel is like people becoming gods, and DC is gods becoming people. And yeah. like that is the perfect example of you know these crazy powerful people just trying to be normal for a night. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of fun. Uh Third one. Which, sorry. So, which sorry. issues are those again? Is uh, you said I believe 30... it's thirty six and thirty seven. It's okay. got the the super super friends. Super friends. Okay. Great. Yeah, it's Super Friends Part One and Two is uh, Batman number thirty six and number thirty seven from okay. uh, last year. It's post post rebirth, right? Yes. Okay. If, I think rebirth is the latest version that they're doing. Yeah. That uh, sounds right. Yeah. And then, I don't know, a third one? Uh, you know, let's go with something just randomly different. Why the Last Man? That's a great, that's a yes. great comic series. Excellent. That's super, like, if you like kind of like your Walking Dead or your, your AMC, HBO, like, apocalyptic books, that one's really good. Like, just the way the world works. Mm-hmm. Quick rundown if you don't know what I'm talking about. It's uh, well, I do, but go you ahead, do, but like please. the the internet, the the internet voices. I I, I didn't sure. mean to offend. I didn't mean to offend. Uh, no, 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 no. Just want to be clear. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's basically it's about this guy and his pet monkey, who are the only surviving humans on Earth after a plague struck and killed everything with a Y chromosome. So all male anything is dead on planet Earth. Which results in a lot of like horrible accidents and lots of dystopian things as, you know, it's, what is it right now, like 60-40? A lot of bad stuff happens and this kind of follows the fallout of the last man on Earth being uh, not quite abducted but protected by the government as they kind of try and figure out what happens or what happened, how it happened and maybe not a cure but trying to, you know, like survive in a world that's completely gone nuts. It's cool. It's really cool. The art's really good. Uh, it's nice and dark if you like your dark stuff. Uh, it's got a good. It's got a good like post-apocalyptic vibe to it without being too nuts. It's got your cults. It's got your space people. It's got your government. It's got 
not safe for work things that aren't violence uh, yeah. that I won't speak yeah. about. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's it's a cool it's a cool book that I think just deserves a bit more recognition. I I was I was happy with it. It was fun. Yeah, I'm surprised that that one hasn't been adapted in some kind of like, TV series or something by now. I think there have been attempts. I think I there heard there have been, been attempts. They've they've been in perpetual pre-production since like 2015. I think mm. I think AMC, AMC or HBO, one of the two big guys, has the rights to it, and they've been trying to figure something out with it. I just think they've AMC, I I think the I, the last rumor I heard was once Walking Dead was done, they were going to go to do this. I think was what it was. Ooh, the Walking okay. Dead starting to wind down now. Oh, not that I watched that. I've just this is just something I've heard. I mm-hmm. guessing from the the freak out rumors I've seen on the internet and what I know of the books, I think it's starting to wind down. Mm-hmm. Um. Plus, it's like what in its eighth season at this point. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's long I, enough to make people go. Uh, anything past five seasons that isn't you know a shojin anime should probably start slowing down. Bleh. Even some of the uh-huh. shojin anime should start slowing down. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody needs eight hundred episodes of anything, honestly. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at you, Doctor Who. I'm looking at you, Supernatural. Oh, <gasps> God. How dare you? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I love both those things one more than the other. Mm. Um, everyone's very nice. <laughs> we're all oh, friends boy. here. That's yeah, not... yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. We're not. We're not starting fights here. It's all very. We could. We could make a third podcast where we nah. just rant nah. all the time. No, 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 no. no Man, there's enough of that. There's awful. enough of that out there's there a, right yeah. now. I'm Let's... just trying to like find things I like and hear what. No, people yeah, like I, about I stuff, like this right? a lot better. Where it's like. We all, like, acknowledge that things are not perfect and that there is no true, clear, like, one is better than the other. But we all like the same genre of thing. Like, let's share about what is great about it and what's nice and, Mm, mm. you know, good stories, good writing, hilariously bad stories that make a good meme. Like, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Uh, So those are your three. You're going for uh, Why the Last Man, Batman, Super Friends. And uh, Dr. Afra, not Dr. Yes. Afro. Totally if there different. is a Dr. Afro comic out there, please let me know, because I bet yeah. it's either trash or <laughs> hilarious. I'm, just, I'm surprised if it doesn't exist, that's all I'm going to say. But yeah, cool, man. The, I'm definitely going to check some of these out, um, some sooner than others, I think, just based on the size here. Um, but <laughs> yeah, this is cool. And then I think we should definitely come back and do one about like just like the production of it, because that'd be... I mean... I don't think we said it at the beginning, but that's you're you're pretty involved, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I guess I could say that. I'm not like a big wig or anybody, but I've I live up in Vancouver. I live in Hollywood North, and I work on film sets for a living. So I've I've worked on almost every DC TV show and a handful of of the movies that are filmed up here, and a couple of Netflix ones as well. So I, I know how this stuff works. And I know what goes through a lot of the. Let's not say psychopaths, because I'll get fired. The, the yeah, producer's no. minds when things happen on set. So I do understand why some of these things turn out the way they do, and I would love to talk about it sometime. Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, as long, whatever whatever lets you keep your job, but it's also interesting, I think. <laughs> right? Ooh. How about this? I'll give you a, a, I'll give you a, a thing right now. After, uh. after May, I can talk about everything, and I will oh. happily do so. <laughs> okay, sounds good. <laughs> That's exciting. All right. Yeah, all right. Okay. All right, man. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> no, dude, no worries. It was a blast.